Please take your Bibles this morning as we turn to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 this morning. We are considering the great mother Elizabeth today. I really enjoyed looking at this great mom this week. It's a lot of things sort of popped out at me I didn't realize before. One of those things is the incredible faith of this mother. The incredible faith when they were living in a time where there was not much faith at all. We're living in that kind of day to day. There are so many similarities between Elizabeth, her day, and our time. It's, it's amazing. Things just don't change a whole lot, do they? But we want to have change as our hearts. We want our hearts to be changed. We want our hearts to have more faith, stronger faith, a, a stronger belief and trust in our Savior. That is exactly what we need. That is what Elizabeth had, a mother of faith. Look at Luke chapter 1, verse number 36. And we'll look at a lot of different verses here in this chapter uh, this morning. But just to kick us off here, Luke 1, 36 and behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. There was a lot of stigmatism and false thinking in these days when this was written and when Elizabeth lived. But God overcame the whole deal. She was a tremendous woman, mother of faith. Let us pray, and we'll read some more scripture and jump in here this morning. Father, thank you so much for your blessing already here this morning. Thank you for these thy people who have come to the house of the Lord today. We ask your blessing now as we look at the word, as we look at a life, as we look at someone to be emulated uh, we ask, Lord, that, that you indeed would make all of us here today people of faith like Elizabeth. Someone who really trusted and believed there were no doubts at all. Wow, what, what a testimony that is. We need that here today. We ask for that today. We ask that in, in these days in which we are living, you would give us tremendous faith, tremendous trust, a confidence in our Savior, a confidence in the word that we read, full of wonderful promises, full of truth. Speak to us this morning from thy word. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to fill me right now for the message today. I trust and depend in you to do that. I am incapable. I need you, and I ask you to direct and to guide today. Give us some special nuggets of truth that will help us and build us and, and help us to leave here with, with a confident step because we are believing and trusting in our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're looking to you right now, Lord Jesus, direct us, teach us today. We ask all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let us turn back to Luke chapter 1 and look at verse number 5 through 17. Verse number 5 through 17. 17. There was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. 
That's a prayer that's been going on for a long time. Long time prayer. Never, ever give up. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord, their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Wow, so much truth and so much meat packed in there. Elizabeth is the person who can be praised as the first woman who confessed Christ in the flesh. This is her. This is Elizabeth. The background of Elizabeth enhances the fact that she was a mother of faith. We have read some scriptures about that. Israel has now dwindled into almost nothing. I mean, they are pretty much gone almost as a nation. Yeah, they're there. They're going to be there, but they are in really sad shape. They are under the scorn and malice of Rome. They're, the boot of Rome is upon their neck. And their own faith and their own religion has deteriorated so badly that, that it's almost like no one has faith anymore. The worship of Jehovah had become little more than sheer formalism. And as we're looking at this today, again, we're seeing the same things today. What is it in America today in religion? Sheer formalism in so many places. It is a shame, but it, it was like that during the time of Elizabeth. And then we have the clergy, we have Caiaphas, Caiaphas, the high priest. He constitutes an object lesson in the degenerate condition of the priesthood at the time. Do we not have a degenerate priesthood in many of our churches today? How many men across this land today are preaching the gospel that you must be born again? How many congregants go there knowing I'm going to be hearing about that again today? You must be born again. And we have to remember that Elizabeth was part and parcel of this spiritually pathetic era of history. Our era is the same today. It is quite pathetic. Elizabeth is a senior citizen now. She and her husband have been praying for many, many years of their lives, for a child. And it's not looking good at all. She was scorned and she was designated as a disgrace because she was childless. That's the way it was in the nation of Israel. It was a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, the Jewish people had a lot of weird ideas. And that was one of them, that they would scorn someone who was childless. Let's remember that God has already given children to other women of old age. This is nothing new that's going to happen here with Elizabeth and Zacharias. We go back to Abraham and Sarah. It was the same deal. They're not going to have any kids. God says, oh, I think we are. Yep. And then there's Isaac and Rebekah. There's Elkanah and Hannah. There's Manoah and his wife. And now we have Elizabeth. Elizabeth, a mother of faith. She was a true believer. Yes, Elizabeth was indeed a mother of faith. We're going to look this morning at five aspects of her life of faith. Five things we find in the life of Elizabeth that shows her great faith. Number one, Elizabeth was righteous. Elizabeth was righteous. Back in verse number six. 
the kickoff verse today, we read that, and they were both righteous before God. Now, we want to be able to say this morning as God's children that that's what we are. God said so about her and Zacharias. They were both righteous. Elizabeth was righteous. Let's note that this is God who says this. God said it. Elizabeth was righteous. We also note that God has nothing to say but good things about Elizabeth. Good things only. You know, how many folks in the Bible does God write down so many things that were not so good? Say things that were really pathetically wicked. No, that's not happening here. Elizabeth met the standard of what God called righteousness. She did that which was right. She did that which was just in the eyes of God. How do we find out what that is? By our daily meditation in his word. That's how we find out how to be like Elizabeth. That's how we find out to be righteous in the eyes of God. It really doesn't get any better than that than God to say, you are a righteous person. Wow, that's really good. That was Elizabeth. That was this mother-to-be. It's interesting also that Elizabeth does not get jealous and doesn't get bad feelings when her cousin Mary comes, and she's going to be the mother of the Messiah. Elizabeth didn't say, oh man, how comes I didn't get that honor? I mean, look at all my years of righteousness. Well, she wasn't thinking that at all. Not at all. She, she gives Mary the most honorable of names. We look at verses 39 to 45 uh, in this same chapter, Luke 1. Verse 39, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe, John the Baptist, leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, this is a miraculous event right here. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me? Note that the mother of my Lord should come to me. Wow. That the mother of my Lord should come to me. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Wow. We're talking about a real woman of faith here. We're talking about a righteous woman. We're talking about things that happened to her and through her because she was a righteous woman. It is amazing. Her son, John Lear, is going to say, he must increase and I must decrease. This is quite the family here. Elizabeth is the last sapling to spring from the soil of Aaron's house, who fulfilled the holy vocation which God called that family to fulfill. Judah was to give birth to the Messiah. But Aaron was to worship him in service. And we see this right down through the life of John the Baptist, Elizabeth, the Lord Jesus, Mary, and their families. Righteousness produces clear spiritual vision. Do you want clear spiritual vision? Be a righteous person. You see what others cannot see. Note, it was Zacharias and Elizabeth, Mary and Joseph, Simeon and Anna, who were privileged to see with clear eyes the dawn 
of the New Testament revelation. It was them. It was those who were righteous. It was those who were holy. Number two, Elizabeth was obedient. Elizabeth was obedient. Not only was Elizabeth righteous, but she was obedient. She was obedient to observe all of God's commandments and ordinances. She did what she knew she was supposed to do. She didn't say, well, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I don't need to do that today. Like, she did it. Oh, yeah. No one was able to lay any charges against Elizabeth. It, could, it wasn't going to happen. She has built a lifelong legacy of obedience to God. I am reminded of some of the young ladies that I taught when I was at Lebanon Christian Academy. You know, every, every couple of years, you'll have these angelic girls come through your class. And, and man, we had some. And I'm not going to throw their names out here, but I'll tell you uh, wh what they are and what, what they're doing today. Uh, these girls were girls that you never had to tell them to be quiet in class. Never had to write them a demerit. Never had to call them out for anything. I mean, they were angelic, really. And uh, one of them today is a medical doctor not far from here, and she married a preacher. How about that? A medical doctor, she married a preacher. And she's a mother. All, all these are our mothers today. Another one was a Christian school teacher for many years and an outstanding athlete and coach. Oh, they, they were like perfect in class. Another one uh, became a school secretary and is a great soloist in her church. And another one became a Christian school teacher and has at least four children today. Wonderful. They were like Elizabeth. And they were like that in high school they were like that before they became adults they were still young people they were still kids but they were righteous you know obedience pays off and it pays off big time when you obey god it's gonna pay off elizabeth is living proof of that you know, we, we, we relegate this hymn, Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe to a kid's song. But you know what? It's profound for us as adults. Because we need to be people of obedience to our Savior. Elizabeth's obedience was not just in appearance, but in the heart and in the life. It was all over her life, all over her legacy. What a beautiful thing it is to see a husband and wife walking together in obedience to God. You know, uh, Third John says, uh, it's a great thing that my children walk in truth. I say it's a great thing that a husband and wife walk in truth. Walk in obedience. The Holy Spirit pronounced them blameless. Blameless. Number three, Elizabeth was an encourager. She was an encourager. Look back to verses 41 to 45. We just read them. We have this meeting here of Elizabeth and Mary. And, and we have this, these encouraging words from Elizabeth. Encouraging words to someone who is bearing the Messiah. And she's just a teenager. And Elizabeth, the older one, the righteous one, the obedient one, she is encouraging this young lady here in these scriptures. She was a great encourager. There, there was no envy, it was encouragement. And she, the Bible says here that she was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she pronounced some very encouraging words to this young mother-to-be. High as was the distinction placed upon her, Elizabeth loses sight of what she's been given altogether and encourages the young mother-to-be and gives this very encouraging benediction. This was a huge help to the young Mary. I mean, Mary was up against it. 
She was up against the scorn and the ridicule and the accusations. And she gets to spend time with her cousin Elizabeth. Three months of encouragement. Three months of walking together with the Lord. Uh, Mary was going through all kinds of thoughts and emotions and the significance of her words that the mother of my Lord should come to me. What is she doing? Confessing this is the mother of the Messiah. I am confessing this before men today. And that encouragement continues for three months and probably beyond as Mary thought on those things. Number four, Elizabeth was rewarded. Elizabeth was rewarded. Let's look at several verses here. 25, verse number 25. Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to what? Take away my reproach among men. Yeah, all these years, God took care of that. God took care of that, taking it all away. Verse 57. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered. And she brought forth a son, verse 58, and her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. Verse number 66. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And then the last verse of the chapter 80, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. God said, this guy is going to be something. This guy is going to turn people to the Lord. And boy, did he ever. We know the end of the story. Thousands of people, thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of people came to know the Lord and believe in him through the word of John the Baptist. Great man. Jesus said it himself, there's none greater than John the Baptist. Wow. She, well, Elizabeth was rewarded. The reproach of being childless was taken away. This thing that should have never happened with anyone in Israel, taken away. The Jews considered, you know, you don't have any kids, that's a reproach. Yeah, not only did she have a child, it was a boy child. Another big deal. Another big deal. Not just a boy child, a prophet of God. Wow. Man who will be great. It was a miracle birth at that. And the Bible tells us here that everyone rejoiced with her. You know, isn't it neat when, when God brings to an end all the finger pointing? and the accusations, and God vindicates. Isn't that an awesome thing? Have you ever experienced that in your life? I have. The day of vindication is great. <laughs> the day of vindication is a great day. Yeah, God worked this out. God overruled the thoughts and the words of men, women, and others. And God said she's going to have a child. It's going to be a son. And it's going to be a great prophet of the Lord. He will be a great man of God. The doubters, the scorners were silenced. Those same ones who scorned are now rejoicing with her. It is a time of great rejoicing. Not only was Elizabeth rewarded with a son, but that son is going to be great. He is going to be great and he will be a success in the eyes of the only one who counts, and that's God. John and Jesus, they grow up together. They are being prepared by, for, by God for their formal introduction into ministry. Both of them enter their ministry at the age of 30, which is what they did in Jewish times. 
John, after his parents die, he goes to the wilderness hills near Hebron. Where is Jesus? He's in Nazareth. You get all these years of preparation, and at the age of 30, both of them bounce onto the scene. Can you, could you imagine this happening in America today? All right, let's drop John the Baptist in Los Angeles. Let's drop the Lord Jesus in New York City. Let's see what happens in this country. I'll tell you what, it would, <laughs> this country would be turned upside down. It would be something to see. It would be totally awesome. And finally, number five, Elizabeth was a mother of faith. Elizabeth was a mother of faith. It is that strong faith that constitutes Elizabeth's most pronounced virtue. This is the one for all mothers, all ladies, all men, all sons. To go after, be a person of true faith, belief, trust, and dependence in our great Savior. It was brought up during Sunday school this morning. It's, it's during those hard times of life where that faith is tested. And that's where you got to have it. It's when the times are tough, the bad things happen. That's where your faith rises to the top. And that's where we find out who we really are. Her faith that Christ had actually begun to assume human form may not strike us as being particularly remarkable until we recognize she had no word of God to tell her. We look back to the scriptures. She didn't have that. She knew. She knew. Wow. She had no historical perspective. She had no New Testament. Her faith was truly remarkable. And in spite of her age and circumstances, Elizabeth immediately transcended all doubts and all fears. She was a true believer in what God had told her. Wow. That's something to shoot for. Believe. She not only hoped for the Messiah's coming, she believed it. She believed it. The steps by which the Lord led Elizabeth to this rich, full faith are not concealed from our view. Let's look at a few of those. Number one, she bore the same name as Aaron's wife. She was a descendant of one of Aaron's daughters. She represents a true sapling from Aaron's family tree. She persevered, preserved all the blessed traditions of Aaron and his family. I mean, all those things established all those centuries ago, she fulfilled today. Right now. It did not fall away from her at all. The Lord led her along the ways of feminine shame and humiliation. Because it was a special disgrace for her to remain childless. And then the Lord suddenly blesses her with this unhoped for pregnancy. Wow. That time of life was gone. It's not happening. Don't ever tell God that. You know, I noticed people here this morning that have dreams and have prayed about a lot of things and you haven't seen it happen yet. Don't stop praying. Don't stop. Never, ever. God is in the miracle working business today as he was then. You never know when God is going to flip the tables in your favor. You never know. And it can happen. It happens that fast. It's just like, boom. Boom. There it is. God will do it. From this unusual demonstration, Elizabeth knew that God had again chosen to accomplish miraculous things. Are you looking for a miracle this morning? I am. I'm looking for a miracle this morning. Are you looking for a miracle this morning? Are you praying on that miracle this morning? Are you praying on that uh, last night and to this morning and you're going to do it again tomorrow? Keep it up. 
Keep it up. God is still working miracles. To Elizabeth, it seemed that the days of Abraham and Sarah have returned. Yeah, the glory days of Abraham and Sarah have come. And God is seeking for his people once again. And indeed he was. Wow. The faith of this mother, Elizabeth, is important today, just as it was 2,000 years ago. In, in the good things, times have not changed either. We are still looking to God in faith. Today's no different than Elizabeth's day. We need mothers of faith now, today, more than ever before. Will you be that mother this morning? Will you be that mother this morning? A mother of faith, just like Elizabeth.